I hope you're having a great day. Well, today is World, World Cancer Day. And we're gonna do a couple of short videos throughout the day. Number one, when we're talking about cancer, what everyone thinks about is chemo, radiation, how long do I have to live, hormonal therapy, surgery, afterlife. Some people only don't even like discussing that they have cancer because in several parts of the world, you know, it's still a taboo subject to even talk about. But when we're talking about cancer on World Cancer Day, there's one very, very strong message that we want to get across to people across the world. That yeah, take your treatments, take your chemo, take your radiation. Yes, we need doctors. Yes, we need treatment. Yes, we need the pharmaceuticals and all of that crap. I'm saying take that. I'm talking about beyond medicine. What is beyond medicine that can help us to change the number of cancer cases that we have around the world right now? Because we can talk about the best technology, we can talk about the best nutrition, best hospitals, best doctors, but why is it growing as an epidemic? We can no longer blame it only on environment. We can't blame it on the air that we breathe, the food that we eat, and the water that we drink. Yes, it plays a role in a small form. It is multifactorial. Cancer is multifactorial, but then all of us should have cancer because we are all breathing the same air. We're almost all eating the the same food and drinking the same water so yes it plays a huge role the quality of your air the quality of your food and the quality of the water you drink plays a huge role in your healing and prevention but we're talking beyond that we're talking about accepting certain truths and facts about cancer and what really happens well today's topic right now is about this whole thing about people believing that they can be God to decide how long a cancer patient has to live now, you may be accurate from your experience. Medical professionals may be accurate to say that, okay, this is the pattern of cancer. It's spread from the breast, it's gone to the liver, it's going to the lungs, maybe we have three months. We have statistics to tell us whether the patient is gonna survive for six months, a year, or three months. Statistics, number one question to you, are you a number or are you a human being? Yes, it is true that most people would like to know when their loved ones are gonna die. Many patients would like to know how much of time they have left to live so that they can get their affairs in order, they can plan everything for their children or their families and all of that stuff. Yeah, that's a population of people who may truly want to know that. And if someone really, really wants to know that, no one should den deny them the truth of knowing how long they possibly have to live. But when you make this arrogant statement that, oh, you have three months to left to live, or you have six months left to live, guess what, you just pronounced death on that patient. You can take the family aside, you can tell the family. I know so many families who know the truth, but they haven't told the patient, okay, unless the patient really, really demands to know the actual truth. Because we need to understand the power of the mind, and we need to understand the effect of placebo and nocebo. What exactly is a placebo? There are so many medical professionals from normal general practitioners to super specialists who all admit to using placebos in their line of treatment. A placebo in Latin means I shall please. You know, we all want to hear good things about our health. We want to hear the doctor telling us you are going to get better. Yes, the treatment is going to work. Yes, your cancer will not come back. We want to hear good things about us, not just from our doctors, from our teachers. Yes, we will pass that exam. We will get that grade. We will get admission in university. I shall please placebo. That's what it means in Latin for the mind. The human mind wants to hear positive things that makes us feel good all the time. Now, what is a nocebo? A nocebo is the opposite. In Latin, it means I shall harm. So you say something as a nocebo and it's planted in someone's in subconscious, that is exactly what's gonna happen. So you may pronounce debt on a patient saying that, oh, as for your cancer and statistics, you have three months left to live. Now you have a patient who looks up to you and worships you in your white coat. You've just pronounced a nocebo. That nocebo is gonna play negatively in that patient's mind and it's gonna behave exactly the way you pronounced it. It's not just doctors. Go back to school where your teacher, where you have teachers who tell students, you're stupid, you're not gonna be anything in life, there's no way you're gonna be successful, you're dumb, and they use all these negative words. And because they're teachers and we look up to them with respect, a lot of people, a lot of children grow up believing what their teachers told them. And we can look around today the world as some of the most successful people who even dropped out of school. Not that I'm saying you should drop out of school, education is important for you. I'm just using it as an example to show you how the power of belief can basically defy anything and everything that someone has said. The same thing with your parents. If your parents have made you believe that you're stupid, you're good for nothing, that you're useless, that you're a particular way, that's exactly the way we grow up to be. 
the power of words, the power of nocebos. So nocebos behave negatively in the human mind and placebos work positively in the human mind. So for example, we all know that pharmaceuticals before promoting a drug, they have to do a placebo study and the drug that they are approving has to work more effectively than a placebo. We have two groups of people. Both these groups of people have a common, common cold and cough. One group is given a sugar pill and told that it's vitamin C. They automatically begin to heal on a sugar pill because the doctor told them they're getting a high dosage of vitamin C. Placebo effect. Another group of people with the same cold and cough is told that, hey, listen, we have nothing. We're just giving you selenium, okay, because we don't have vitamin C stock right now. That's going to come next week, the dosage that's going to heal you. But they're actually given vitamin C, okay, and the group with the same cold and cough starts to feel better, okay, because they actually, they didn't even know that they were getting a vitamin C. They thought they were getting a normal selenium trace mineral. So you see, this is a placebo effect on the human mind. And for the longest time, for civilizations and civilizations, people have used the power of placebo. Now, this can become a fraud if you're trying to sell, if you're trying to sell, like if I take a pill right now and say, this pill is gonna take away your cancer and I'm gonna make profits out of that, that's a fraud, that's not a placebo effect, okay? Because you're gaining financially from it and you're destroying the life of the patient. So what I'm trying to talk about is hope. What I'm talking about is hope and every human being Every human being deserves hope from doctors, from scientists, from people. You see a lot of the world today hides behind research. They hide besides prove it, prove it, prove it, and I'll do it. Yes, you're right. You need to prove things so it doesn't have a negative impact on your body, your health, or the country, or the universe. It's as simple as that. But there's also something called common sense, which is beyond medicine. But you, you hide behind research, which is so well controlled by the food lobbies, by the pharmaceuticals, because they want to control how much you know and how much will keep the disease in a particular state of being chronic. And that is the truth of our world. It's as simple as that. We can put a man on the moon. We can have artificial intelligence taking off our life, but yet we can't seem to reduce this count of cancer, diabetes and everything else, which comes under the category of mostly lifestyle diseases. Coming back to this. Every human being is unique and individual in nature. People who have been pronounced three months to live, two weeks to live, one year to live, are still living their 10th year, their 11th year, and their 12th year. And people like this exists in thousands and thousands across the globe. All I'm trying to say is do not let anyone pronounce your death sentence for you because no one is God and no one is more intelligent than these trillion cells in your body okay working for you the human body has the intelligence to heal but we don't believe in that because the media has made us believe that things like technology things like superfoods are more powerful than the own capacity of the human body to heal yes it's true some people's bodies will not heal them because they've crossed the set point but we're not no one's got to decide who's going to heal and who's not going to heal so there are people, like I said, who will really want to know the truth because they have to plan their affairs, they need to plan their finances and all of that stuff. That's a personal decision. But for everyone else, when you're working with your doctors, for your family, please ensure that they are never told. No one pronounces how long they have to live. I can understand if it was true. If we can show 100% data right now that yes, this particular cancer at this stage will give you two months left to live. I was in Bangalore yesterday. We were treating a boy, a young boy with a brain tumor. The doctors gave him three months to live, six months left to live. He came in walking after a year and a half yesterday with his wife, with his child. He shopped at the market. He could have a proper conversation with me. He was healthy and he believes he's going to live a normal life and that cancer, a GBM, which is a lethal cancer, is not going to impact him. You see, these are miracles. These are examples of how we shouldn't let human beings and human stupidity think that they're smarter than nature and smarter than the human body. This is just one case. We have hundreds and thousands of cases around the world who have defied what the doctors have pronounced on them. You know, we're in a world where I'm not against doctors, I'm not against chemo, I'm not against radiation, we're into integrative medicine. We have doctors on our team, we respect them. But all I'm trying to say is, in our ego and in our pride, I don't think anyone should ever have the right to pronounce and tell the patient. Tell the family, yes, this kind of cancer has three to six months, but also give them hope. Say, yes, the statistics show that three to six months is a lifeline for this patient, but hey, listen, 
there are miracles there's hope there's so much more beyond medicine that you can do there's the power of your mind there's your visualization there's prayer there's a the power of prayer that can work for you so if you want pronounce but also give them hope just pronouncing doesn't it just inflates your ego it just inflates your pride but I will say this and I will say it again there is no doctor or professional in this world who has the right or the power to pronounce death on anyone or decide how long you are going to live. It's in religion where they say the power of life and death is in the tongue. It is so true. You can look at a young girl today and say you're fat and ugly and that girl will grow up thinking she's fat and ugly even though she's beautiful and she will revolve her life because of that one statement that she heard, that body image issue that she now has because someone said it to her, which is why it is so important in all of our fights, in our relationships, in our communication with people that we carefully guard what comes out of our mouth. Here you have a boss telling a colleague that, hey, you can't grow because you don't have what it takes to be the CEO or you don't have what it takes to be a manager. This is the most common corporate bullshit that exists in companies around the world where managers think that they are smart enough to decide how smart the juniors are. Yeah, maybe you just got to tell them the truth and say we don't have enough of positions, so we got to lie to you. But you shouldn't use the power of your tongue to make someone feel that they're not good enough. You can use the power of, tongue, of the tongue to constructively make them better, to work with their weaknesses, to work with their areas of opportunity. So whether you're a parent, whether you're in a relationship, you guard what your tongue says. And I'm, I might say this, and you may be thinking that I do that. No, I'm human being. I fall today. I use words that can probably make people feel bad and make people in relationships feel bad and all of that stuff. We're not perfect, but we got to be mindful. We'll continue to make mistakes, but the power of life and death is in the tongue. Right now, with your words, you can change the life and health of someone. You can change the body image of a young girl or a boy by appreciating them genuinely, by telling them good things about themselves. But we have mothers today with their teenage daughters who basically make them believe that only if you have a thin body or only if you look a particular way will you find a boy to get married to. Yes, I'm talking about urban India. India, be ashamed of yourselves. There are people in urban India, educated families, educated families, and the parents make their daughters believe that they're not beautiful enough and they should be beautiful enough in order to find a man to marry them. This is educated India and this has to change because you can imagine what that poor girl is going to, to get a man, to be married, to be in a sacred relationship. I need to be thin, I need to be beautiful. So that's how she gets accepted into life and that never lasts at some given point. And this is what I mean, coming back to cancer, even if the patient has six days left to live or 12 days left to live and organ failure is happening, we have patients who were in organ failure, the lungs were shutting down, the kidneys were shutting down, but they made a complete recovery, a complete recovery. We don't know what made that recovery. It's a miracle. It's their own body that heal them. And those people are living for their sixth and seventh year, a completely healthy life today. You have the choice to believe. Okay, we don't worship anyone, whatever your God is, whatever your religion is, whether you believe in God or not. We don't worship the people who heal us. No one worships me. No one worships a doctor. We look at them for enabling our healing, enabling our healing, because no one has the power to heal you but your own body. Until next time, have a good day. Eat smart, move more, sleep right and breathe deep. At 1.30 today, we're going to talk about ways to possibly prevent cancer. What we're trying to understand right now is there is no magic pill in this world. There is no magic treatment in this world that is going to take away your cancer, prevent your cancer or heal you. It is a multifactorial disease, which means it needs a multifactorial approach to prevent or to heal. See you in a bit.